going to look at how to add a chuck to a fixture library using intermediate tooling in Gibscan. So you see on the screen here that I have a chuck and a jaw already defined. Now you'll notice that I only have one jaw here. Okay, so that's because I am going to use this in conjunction with a macro that will do two things. It will sense the, uh, or it will extract rather, the uh, stock diameter that you create in the machine that you're actually going to use it in and move it out, in this case up, uh, to that diameter automatically. It will also duplicate it in two other places here, okay? So the macro will do that for us. We'll talk more about that uh, in a second. But one thing that's important to do in preparation for that is to make sure that you'll notice that uh, I am right on the XZ plane, zero, a Y value of zero, okay? So for the macro to work correctly, you wanna have the jaw right there. Now, this is not a, uh, this is not a class on manipulating geometry or anything like that. So if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, that's another topic, but I've already jockeyed it into place. So it's, it's all set here. Also, another thing you'll notice is that I've used a, an out of the box horizontal lathe with a generic shank here. Okay. So that's what we want to use to, to go ahead and do that. <coughs> okay, great. Uh, one other thing for the macro to work properly, this has to be the first solid in the file and this has to be the second solid in the file so if you're getting this geometry from another source you want to create a new file such as this and then import this first and this second otherwise the macro will not work correctly and you can only have two solids in the entire file for this macro to work properly okay so make note of that one other thing is that I have, uh, you'll notice here in the name, it says 5.74803 length. So I have interrogated this, uh, this geometry so that it is exactly from, uh, from the zero to the front of this chuck jaw, that distance, okay? That's important to know for later on um, when we set up the spindles in the machine that we're actually going to use it in. We'll talk more about that later. Um, one more thing, you'll notice that this is aligned such that the back, uh, the origin of the back of the chuck and jaws is, is uh, you know, right at the back of this. Okay, it's at zero. It moves forward in the Z from there. Okay, it's important that you have that, that standard established as well. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Oh, one other thing is that uh, this jaw should be aligned such that it moves up in the Y because the macro will assume it is moving up in the Y. So you want to have this uh, rotational orientation correct as well in order to use that. Now, if you're not using the macro, uh, the only thing that's important is where the back of the uh, thing is right there. And then you can uh, create mul multiple instances of the of the uh, chuck jaws in various positions that you certainly have that option as well. But again, uh, we'll be using this macro here. All right, so we're ready to, to, to get started. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and fixture library. Chucks are considered part of the fixture library in the intermediate tooling group. Here. So I'm going to pick this and you'll notice that I have a library already established called Chucks with Auto Adjust Jaws, okay? Now, if I didn't have a library, this procedure is the same. I'd simply hit Create, and I give it a, uh, create, give it a name, and then uh, go ahead and edit it, okay? So, but in this case, I have one Chuck already in. We're going to add another. So I'm going to click on Edit Library, and you will notice that by default, it gives it uh, the same name as the VNC file. So you can only have one VNC file 
per chuck in the library. In other words, you can't have multiple families of chucks in here uh, and then pick and choose what you want. This is just the way it works. It's got to be a single Gibbscam VNC file for each entry in the library. Okay. So what I'm going to do, since this is all defined here, I'm just going to go ahead and say, let's add this fixture to the library. You notice it says new, right? Because it doesn't exist in the library right now. So let's go ahead and add this to the library and it will go through some gyrations here. We'll wait for this to finish. Um, I just saved this, but I'll go ahead and say yes. Let's let's save it again. Can't hurt. Again, going through gyrations. Okay, great. So now it's in there. It's giving. You notice it gives it the same name as the VNC file in the library. I'm going to go ahead and give it a type. We'll talk more about where we access this later, but I'm going to tell it, hey, it's a, it's a Chuck, right? And um, if I wanted to, even though it's already in the name here, I could go ahead and put uh, like the Chuck width, I'll put in 5.74803. Not necessary to do this, not required, but uh, again, just, just something that is nice to have. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it's, as you can see, it's going through some internal stuff here. And now what I want to do is, remember I mentioned that macro. I want to test that macro. Um, and what I, what I want to test it is, let's go here to document control and let's put it at, uh, let's put our diameter of our stock at three in diameter value. Okay. So you'll see that our stock got smaller here. Okay, let's just go ahead and test that to see if it looks like it's squeezing down on three inches. And, you know, qualitatively it does. So to me, it tells me that, hey, this macro is is working as designed. Okay, so that's um, another thing that's, that you want to go ahead and do. By the way, post data, in case there's any, any like special things you want to put out in, uh, have your post processor put out, in relation to this chuck and jaws, you can go ahead and add that there as well. I'm not going to, I'm not going to add anything. So, but that's how we go ahead and, and create it in the library. So hopefully uh, pretty straightforward here. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have a machine open here that I'm going to use to uh, test this on and also to add it to. Okay. Now, one thing that's important before you do anything, when you're going to use it in a machine, is to go to File and Machine Data. Okay. So if you go to my if I go to my Document Control, I can see that I'm using this particular machine. This has a, an MDD file associated with it, a machine definition document file that talks about the parameters and that sort of thing that this, including what libraries this can access. So that's what I'm going to edit here at this point, okay? Now, I've all, you notice I have Spindle 1 and Spindle 2 here. I've already added something at Spindle 2 with another, uh, Chuck that was that was in the same library previously to find a six inch diameter instead of a 10 inch. We just added a, a 10 inch. So I'm going to go to uh, spindle one and make sure that it, said, that it says Chuck here, right? I could also say any type and it would then open it up to anything, but I'm going to restrict it to a Chuck. If I say not used, then I'm not going to be able to use it at all. So it's important that I don't pick not used for this, make sure that it says something. And again, in this case, Chucks. Now you notice in the Chucks, I have a lot of different libraries here, but I have checked on the Chucks with auto adjust jaws. That's the one I just added um, this 10 inch uh, Chuck. I just added it to this library, okay? 
So at this point, this library has two, uh, two checks in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save changes. It's important you do that first and then close this box out because otherwise you're not going to be, be able to access that new check that we made. All right, now let's go into document control and I'm gonna click on the intermediate tooling tab. Now, as I mentioned, you'll notice that we already, Spindle 2 already is accessing this six cents chuck with the 5.74803 length, right? But Spindle 1 doesn't have anything. So I'm going to need to double click on this. And I'm going to, you'll notice it accesses right away that uh, uh, 10 inch chuck. You notice it's accessing all libraries, but I could restrict it to just this. Okay, and I can see then that I have two things in my library. But I want the 10 incher, the one I just made. And then I'm just going to click OK. All right, and then once I do that, we see it added here in the intermediate tooling tab of my document control. So let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm going into Machine Sim. And let me rotate this correctly here. And you will notice that I, I have that chuck right there. Okay. And I have a smaller one there on the subspindle, the six incher. All right. So it looks like it worked all right. It looks like it is squeezing around that, uh, the stock that I have defined in this particular one. Uh, so it appears to be, uh, to, to be working correctly. Let's look at a couple other things uh, specific to spindle one, okay? So you will notice that I do have this set at minus seven from the origin. So my stock is actually uh, seven inches long and I have a 10,000 spacing allowance, which means that, which means that from the zero point here, uh, the stock actually goes out 0.01. Um, it's difficult to see because there's not much, so I'll zoom up here just to show that, okay? So that's my 10 thousandths uh, that we have right here. All right, now you notice something. Uh, I mentioned that it was optional, but I did put in that length value when I defined it. Um, I highly recommend that you do that because it will then automatically put in this value for that, so you don't have to worry about uh, remembering what that distance is or measuring it after the fact, it puts it in for you automatically. So that now this five inches means it is sticking out from the very front of that, of that chuck. Just to check it, just to check it, let's put in zero. Say we want it sticking out zero from that. And let's go back into our machine sim Zoom out a little bit, and I'm just going to click this so that the door slides out of the way. See how it's now exactly, in terms of the Z, it's uh, exactly at the front of the jaw, right? So um, that's why it's nice to have that value in there to automatically offset that. So I'm gonna put it back to the five inches that I had there before and then just go back into my machine sim to make sure that that's right. I always go stop, rewind, and then run, or in this case, next feature, just to open the door. So we now have exactly five inches running out of there, okay? So that's how you uh, create a chuck, uh, a chuck in the fixture library of intermediate tooling in Gibscam. Uh, one other thing I had mentioned about this macro, let's go back to that. Here's the uh, macro, and you'll notice that I gave it the exact same name as the BNC file, okay? It has to be the exact same name. So instead of, instead of .bnc, it says .mac. It has to be the exact same name for this to work. Uh, one other thing, you can, of course, just do a screenshot of this and duplicate this macro yourself. 
Uh, or if you'd like, you can simply contact us at uh, support at daystrumtechnologies.com and we'd be happy to go ahead and send you that file. One more thing, in terms of where everything is, uh, you'll notice that I am in program data, Cambrio, GibbsCam, and this version number will change depending on the version of GibbsCam you are using, but then intermediate tooling fixtures, and then the sub folder under that is Chucks with Auto Adjust Jaws. That is exactly the same as the library name. So when I created that library, I gave it that name. It created this folder for me automatically along this path, okay? And you will notice, remember I mentioned I have two uh, Chuck Jaws in there now, or Chucks. So um, here's the first one I had, the six inch diameter, and you see that it's created automatically when I, I did the library, it created this BMP, which is a, a bitmap file, a graphics file uh, for thumbnail, uh, so that you can see what it is as a preview. And I had uh, made this macro myself in anticipation of this. So I knew I was going to name it this and I gave it the exact same name as the VNC file so that that would work. Here's the actual VNC file that we save. And these FB2 um, files, these are the ones that it makes automatically uh, for uh, for the simulation itself. It actually doesn't access the VNC. It creates these other uh, faceted representations of that. Okay, so that's where everything is. That's how the macro works. And, you know, the end result is this. Thank you very much. <laughs>